Imagine the apostles outside the treasury. James, John, Bartholomew, do you have any idea why Jesus wants us here to just watch people put money in the treasury? No, I have no idea. I don't know what's going on. Look at that little lady there. She's there with all the Pharisees and the Sadducees, putting money in the temple. I wonder how much she's going to give. It probably won't be too much. She puts in two small coins. Is she crazy? That's a lot for her. Look at her clothes. She has nothing. I've seen her before begging. She doesn't have any food. Is she crazy? Why would she do that? Why does she take her money that she needs so badly and put it in the treasury? Jesus, why is she putting money in the treasury? She needs it. Why don't you ask her? Okay, we'll ask her. Uh, Ma'am, could we ask a question of you? Jesus says we should ask you why you put money in the temple box. Buzz off. It's your own. It's my business. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But we really like to know. Jesus looks across at her, nods his head, and she starts to tell them a story. I'm an old widow. I had a very loving husband. I had a great life. Sure, I'm poor. I don't have much money at all. We never had much, ever. But we were always happy. We had love in our house. We were fulfilled because God took care of us. The love of God is always with us. Not in our possessions, but in the relationships we had in our family. It was beautiful. My husband, myself, my children, we struggled a lot. It's not easy to be married now. The Romans came in. You know what they did? They took all of our land, every single inch of it. They took it for themselves. We were scared all the time. But you know what? God took care of us. When we were on our very last shekel, we asked God's help, and we muddled through. Oh, our kids are great, too. We gave thanks in the temple when they were born for each one of them. Sure, it's another mouth to feed, another person to give clothes to, and once again, we didn't have much, but they were a great blessing, wonderful, wonderful kids. They struggled alongside of us. We are still here, and those kids grew up to be good citizens of Jerusalem, and they're also now good parents. They do help me out since my husband died. They're very kind to me. And my husband, he was a good man, but he had his limitations because we didn't have much money coming in. But you know what? Even though we didn't have much, we made it through. In each time of struggle, in each time of our problems or difficulties, God was our shelter and our strength. We read about Moses and his ancestors in the desert and how they struggled. Forty years they went through the desert trying to find a place and finally they found it. And in each and every moment, God took care of them. David as well. David was a sinful guy. He was a great general, but he also was a sinful person. But you know what? God loved him too. Myself, husband, kids, we all we're sinful people, but God still loved us and cared for us always. I'm nothing special. Look around at all these rich people. Look at all the money that they put in the treasury. Aren't they wonderful? They really are generous. They have a lot, but they don't have what I have. That is an assurance that everything will be okay. All will be well. See, these Pharisees and Sadducees, they rely on their cash, on their power, on their influence in order to get ahead. I don't have that. So I rely on God and God alone. They are also giving their donations out of pressure. They have to give, or else people will judge them. They're, they're known people in this city. And if they don't give, you can bet people are going to talk about them. See that guy over there? 
His name is Zacchaeus. Now Zacchaeus, he steals from everybody. Now, the thing is, I shouldn't talk bad about Zacchaeus, and I hope Jesus can talk to him one day, because he needs a good talking to him. Zacchaeus takes off the top from the taxes that go to the Romans, and he steals from us. He's got to get his comeuppance one day. I hope he changes his life. Maybe Jesus can talk to him. What these people give, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of the business people, they're going to make it up tomorrow. They give a hundred bucks to a uh, hundred shekels today, they'll make that hundred shekels back tomorrow. And also, too, remember, they're going there at the most busy time of the day so everybody can see them with their money in the treasury. For me, I don't give so people will notice me. I'm a little old widow. Nobody is going to notice me. But I give in thanksgiving. I give because of the blessings that God has given to me. Life was hard. I lost family members and friends. Relying on my children for help is really, really tough for me. But all is well. And do you know why? Because your friend Jesus over here, he tells me that he loves me. He says, blessed are the poor. Blessed are the meek. The kingdom of heaven will be theirs. They will inherit the earth. And you know what? I believe him. I've seen the things that he can do. And so I'm assured. I'm confident. And so what do I do? I put in my two small coins. It's all I can spare. I don't have a whole lot of money like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and that bum Zacchaeus. But you know what? I am happy because God indeed has blessed me. I have a lot in my life. Children, friends, family, but even more so, I have that promise that God will be with me always. I sacrifice for the Lord because the Lord has sacrificed for me. So there's a, a widow in that gospel story who is generous. Why? Because of the blessings that she has received. God takes care of her and also the widow in that first reading today as well. That widow in the gospel doesn't have much, but she just keeps putting one foot in front of another and keeps moving forward, knowing that God is with her for always. When Jesus talks uh, or teaches the apostles the Our Father, they talk about the daily bread. She receives her daily bread. She doesn't have anything much over that daily bread, but she gets that sustenance that she needs every single day. Nothing extravagant, but enough to keep, keep going forward on. For ourselves, like the widow in the gospel story, we may struggle. We may find ourselves unhappy at times. We, we may wonder where our next next shekel, where our next uh, meal is going to come from. But life indeed is a blessed one. It is a blessing to each and every one of us. We may not have much, but we are still blessed by God each and every day. And so we are called to be generous, generous to those who are around us. And we pray that God can give us the same spirit that the lady in today's gospel had. One of a quiet assurance that no matter what may happen, no matter what obstacle we may face in our lives, no matter how much sadness or difficulty we may encounter, that the Lord is always there, ready to carry us in the palm of His hand. And so today's gospel really is a story of hope, a story of confidence, because God is always there, grasping us by the hand, pulling us forward sometimes, and other times just kind of walking very gently aside from us, and maybe even some days pushing us forward. But always, always God is there for us. That is our confidence, that is our hope, and that is the promise that we have received. And so this evening, as we come together for Mass, as we give thanks to God for all that we have and all that we are, and then especially as we come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ, we remember indeed how blessed we are to have our God with us, to get, have our God with us in this sacrament of His body and blood, to have Him fill us and then push us out into the world so that we can be His disciples each and every day. We pray each and every day that God may continue to, to bear us up, to hold us in the palm of His hand, and to take care of us as He has always done in the past.